morning, Professor Wörsch and Dr. Zambelli. Thank you very much for taking the time for this interview with us today. My pleasure. Professor Wörsch, can you tell us something about the history that you and your group have with the Fluid FM? Since when have you been working with it? So the Fluid FM was uh, one of our very first discoveries. The group was started in 2006 and like so often in uh, scientific history, it is also thanks to a coincidence. I was lucky to have um, Tommaso starting in the group in September who is a scanning probe microscopy specialist and I had an innovative PhD student and the two of them went to a conference and this is where the discovery was made. And Tommaso can tell you a little bit more about how it was done. So, I must thank uh, Professor Voros and Janos uh, to trust in me because uh, it was a completely new uh, research field for me. And uh, indeed, uh, I started uh, in Janos' lab in September and I had uh, two months to get acquainted with the Bio AFM at a conference, uh, Le Diable Re in Switzerland. I was discussing during a pause with uh, Mike Gabi who was a PhD student in our lab, and he asked me the question, Tommaso, what about putting uh, or implementing uh, a force control onto glass micropipettes to make uh, the operation much more comfortable? Force control for me was, of, of course, uh, AFM, atomic force microscopy, and then uh, the question was, how can we replace the glass uh, micropipe? And I knew a group who was uh, fabricating such a micro-channel cantilevers in uh, CSM, Neuchâtel, Switzerland. André Meister, Jérôme Polizel maris Martha Lyle, Harry Heinzelmann. And when back from the conference, we contacted them and then uh, everything. This was the beginning of the history. And then uh, what happened is that um, um, they gave us uh, channel cantilevers. The student uh, and Tommaso came back, said, Dan, how could we put it on, a, on an AFM? And the first experiment worked right away. So we were, we of course, became very excited that this is really bringing us lots of new possibilities. How many people in your group are working with the Fluid FM? How many systems do you have today? So then it started to boom, the whole story uh, exploded. Uh, we, we very quickly prepared a major publication uh, where we could demonstrate the first application potential. We spotted uh, biomolecules on surfaces. What else we did we really? The injection into mammalian cells, uh, but, but with the monitoring the deep penetration into the cells, so seeing also the force, recording the force signal. So it was really force controlled injection. And so so this, uh, this is then started. Uh, that already gave us the credibility with the funding agencies and we very, very quickly um, started lots of projects. We have right now about close to 10 running projects with this technology. And uh, this of course made us also aware that we, we need lots of instruments. So we have now uh, two of the new commercial systems from Cytosearch plus uh, uh, two other uh, systems, one is a home build one, another one is a modified uh, AFM that can accommodate all these projects. And many funding agencies uh, uh, helped us uh, to get this. At the very beginning, we, we, we were trusted by the Swiss Innovation Promotion Agency, the C CTI, KTI, and then the Swiss National Science Foundation, the Swiss Nanoterra program and the Swiss System X program. Dr. Zambelli, as the initiator of the Fluid FM, what would you say are the key benefits of the system? So, the key benefit is really the fact that we that the Fluid FM can fully be operated in liquid. So and the it conjugates the advantages of microfluidics with the advantage of force control. Force control gives us the opportunity to gentle touch surfaces and it can be also the cell membrane so we, don't, we, don't, we do not damage it. At the same time, the microfluidics 
gives us the opportunity to dispense or inject, in the case of a cell, all the most different solutions. And we should not forget about the fact that it's also an imaging tool. And it uh, gives us the possibility for unprecedented imaging capabilities. We can do all kinds of very novel uh, imaging uh, experiments, characterizing uh, surfaces that, um, that are important for our other applications, for example. Can you tell us something about the main focus of your research and some key applications for the Fluid FM in relation to this? Um, we are an applied research lab. Most of uh, what we are working on is enabling technology development. And this is also, Fluid FM is one of such examples. And uh, by now, because of the versatility, Fluid FM became one of the major pillars of the group activities. Uh, at least one third, but maybe even close to half of our activities is somehow related to, uh, to the Fluid FM by now. And um, the directions uh, are mostly related to the fact that this is a unique tool which allows us to interact with cells and biological molecules in the native environment at the nanometer scale, which is their natural length scale. So many of our um, applied research projects benefit from the Fluid FM, but also some of our fundamental uh, activities uh, benefit from the Fluid FM. Maybe you could name a few examples. Well, at the very beginning, in the first years, it was a question to demonstrate all the different uh, applications, for example, concerning the, the cells, it, it is about to demonstrate the possibility to inject something into the cells, to extract something from a cell, to measure the adhesion of the cells, and uh, to develop this uh, so-called force controlled electrophysiology, for example, patch clamp, to measure the electrical activity of the cells. But then uh, there are also possibility as a lithography. Lithography tool, mostly in liquid, but why not also in air? And uh, here I would like also to, to emphasize exactly the, the step between the demonstrator and then uh, to answer original questions. And uh, original question biology, we are in engineering, physicist. So we, it was important for us to establish collaborations with uh, true experts in their field. And we were lucky to, that we could attract uh, Professor Forold in the Department of Biology of the ETH for all the single cell experiments. And they have also a fluid FM machine running. And uh, University of Bern, Professor Gabriel, who is an uh, expert in patch clamp but also in my lab, so there, there are, uh, um, the, f the fact that the Fluid FM people are around us uh, think, make also the others aware of the possibilities and often happens that uh, in our other research fields the Fluid FM brings in the, the necessary extra that, uh, that help us to characterize our surfaces or to make new kinds of uh, uh, systems. For example, uh, one of our future directions um, is related to building neural networks and we are in the middle of preparing the very first publication where we, actually the easiest was to do it with a fluid FM, um, where we literally tell the neurons where to grow, and that can be done by injecting a certain substance um, uh, on, the, on the location where we want with the fluid FM. Besides this, what would you say have been the most relevant or most promising results so far? Um, I would not really want to, to, to name only one, because uh, I always tell my students that I would love to do any of their projects. So they are equally important, but, uh, but certainly the ones listed by Tommaso are all very nice. Uh, the, fact that the possibility of um, uh, injecting into single cells, uh, interacting with subcellular features, with bacteria, um, the fact that you can measure forces between the cells, um, with unprecedented precision, um, the fact that you you ha you have new tools in terms of lithography, new fabrication tools in material science, and new characterization tools, um, be it biosensing or or 
just, just regularly learning about surfaces, new imaging tools. These are all very exciting uh, new possibilities and I would not dare to name only one. Right now, the limit is the sky. We have really uh, so many ideas that we have not enough hands to, uh, to do all of them. Um, it's a, I see this exponential growth of, uh, of uh, ideas. And the more people will join us, uh, I think we will also start stimulating uh, each other and then more new original ideas will come. Where do you see the biggest application potential for the fluid FM in the future? So in our field, um, one of the, the target directions is, uh, is inter interacting with uh, neurons. And, uh, and in this lab, this is becoming one of the key directions. We are interacting with neurons where the fluid FM brings the benefit of, uh, of this really gentle touch, um, uh, very well precise positioning. Um, we are able to both chemically and mechanically and electrically interact with the neurons at their length scale in a way they interact with each other. There are also other uh, exciting directions, maybe you, you, you would name the material science ones. But <clears throat> I think uh, since we are in the electro engineering department, for us uh, it's also important the local electrochemistry, meaning that we can stimulate reactions or electrochemical reaction just under the tip, so confine them under the tip. And uh, this is in our lab, since science is getting more and is becoming more and more interdisciplinary, there is of course the aspect of single cell biology. And single cell biology, to carry out such experiments, you need tools enabled to manipulate a single cell. And the advantage, the benefit of the fluid FM is not only that it allows it allows to operate with a single cell, but with a single cell with an identity. It's not only one, but it's this particular cell. So I can and I can carry out experiment before of first infecting the cell and then eventually to analyze the effect of the infection in the cell. If you could give one short message or statement about the system to people who are interested in getting started with Fluid FM, what would it be? I would really put the accent on the fact that versatile machine, meaning that it can carry out experiments in the broadest spectrum of science, from physics, chemistry, material science, biology, and universal machine, meaning that uh, you are really a lot of freedom on the substrate that you are, on which you can work and uh, the molecules that you can deliver. I also would like to add that it's a stimulating technology as well. It allows you to, uh, to think big, it allows you to think about new ideas, new approaches that you, you didn't have the possibility to think before because you didn't have the tool to do it. So often the, the, the presence of the machine stimulates new ideas within the lab. Now Professor Wörisch, what is your vision for the future for the Fluid FM? I uh, see it already among, among my people, the ones who already left the lab, but they are aware that there is a Fluid FM, that they implement it in their future research directions when becoming professors at, uh, at different uh, universities. Uh, within our own lab, this is also going to stay instrumental. I think um, the, the, the science of um, interacting with, with uh, living creatures, cells, um, bacteria, uh, subcellular features at their length scale will be for the next 10-20 years uh, around us and I think that the Fluid FM is a major technology benefit of, at, at this length scale. Professor Wörisch, Dr. Zambelli, thank you both very much for this interview.
You're welcome.